of our faith. In Israel, still today, there are shepherds and there are sheep. And what will happen is the sheep and the shepherds will all converge, two or three or even four groups of them, on a watering hole. And what will happen is the shepherd and his sheep will go down with another shepherd and his sheep, and they'll converge. And all the sheep will mix together. When it's time to go, the shepherds go different directions. And each shepherd calls out to his sheep, and you want to know what happens? All those sheep separate, and they follow their individual shepherds. Why? Because the sheep hears the voice of the shepherd, and another voice he will not follow. We have the great shepherd, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, using that illustration that was common in Israel, people could mentally see the picture. My sheep hear my voice. If you're of this fold, you'll follow me, Jesus said. And they came out of the Phariseeism and the Sadduceeism, and they came out of false religions, they came out of Hellenistic thinking, Greek culture at the time. There was witchcraft in the city. And another they would not follow, even though his voices were not without significance. They didn't line up with Jesus' voice. And if they were truly the sheep of Jesus, they won't follow another. Turn with me to John chapter 6, verse 66. And I'm not talking about denominations here. I'm not talking about one pastor being a shepherd versus another pastor being a shepherd. I'm talking about Jesus being our shepherd, operating his voice through many ministers and ministries under the banner of Christendom. And we follow him because we're in a personal relationship with the risen Savior. He walks with us and he talks with us in the garden in the cool of the day. If we'll merely hearken unto his voice. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be extolled in all the earth. It says, Morning by morning he wakeneth me, and he gives me the tongue of the learned, that I might know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. It's like apples of gold in settings of silver. A word fitly spoken. Have you ever been in a situation where you were just a wreck emotionally? Where you were tied up, stressed out, and somebody came to you with a word in season, and it just broke that yoke off of you, and it just set you free. And all of a sudden you began to laugh. That's the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Holy Spirit operating through an individual to bring refreshing and to set you free. And you may also have been in a situation where somebody tried to share a word in season with you, but you just weren't hearing it because you were so excited about your grief or anger or, or madness. And then later on when you calmed down, you thought about that, and it broke the yoke off of you and set you free. John 6, 66. John 6, 6, 6. What happens in John 666? What was going on is Jesus says, you must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. He wasn't preaching cannibalism. He was prophesying about the body and blood of Jesus. The word, the bread of life, the body of Christ. The spirit, the blood or the wine that we would later drink. And this is what happened verse 63, it is, the, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Say the flesh, flesh. profiteth Profit. nothing. Profit. We're going to get into the voice of the flesh here in a minute. How much does the voice of the flesh profit? Nothing. You remember Moses was called by God to deliver Israel? And he decided he was going to go out in the power of his own flesh and he delivered an Israelite. And in the process, he inadvertently killed an Egyptian. Oops. Moses was banished to the backside of the mountain for 40 years, where he could get his flesh under. And when he came back, he came back in the power of the Spirit. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth 
nothing. Moses, in the power of his own flesh, was able to deliver one Israelite and have a little bit of collateral damage of an Egyptian and get banished as a murderer trying to do God's work. There are some people that go to abortion clinics today under the voice of their own flesh, not realizing that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the unseen realm of darkness, and they go shoot a couple of abortionists thinking they've done God a service. And then they get banished to the backside of the mountain to a state prison for the next 40 years, and they can't figure out what happened. I don't believe that God calls us to shoot abortionists. I believe that God calls us to shoot the devils off the abortionists in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. And to knock off the heads of the enemy and set the captive free because the abortionist is captive also. Yeah. Moses, in the power of his own flesh, with a mantle and calling of God on him, kills an Egyptian, delivers an Israelite, and goes on the backside of the mountain for 40 years. Scripture says he returned from the wilderness, the meekest man on all the earth. Moses was now ready to be used by God. Look to your neighbor and say, are you ready? Ooh. Are you ready? John chapter 6, verse 64, But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given to him of my Father. And then John 6, 6, 6. From that time, many of his disciples, say disciples, disciples. went back and walked no more with Jesus. Interesting that it would be John 6, 6, 6 that they apostatized mm -hmm. and walked back. And no longer followed Jesus. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus said. Another you will not follow. But then we see in scripture that there is the voice that is with signification, but it is contrary to the voice of God. Let's move on into the teaching. Six origins of voices. The first origin of the voice is the voice of God. That includes the voice of the Father, the voice of the Son, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of angels which carry messages from the throne of God, like a Gabriel or a Michael or others in Scripture that are unnamed, and the voice of God's anointed ministers that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit within their voice speaking a message of life. The second voice that's in the world that is not without signification, but is contrary to the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's the voice of the Father, the voice of the Son, the voice of the angels that are sent from heaven, the voice of God's ministers who carry the voice of the Lord, Satan, which includes principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, demon spirits, false prophets and false teachers, that literally the voice of the enemy flows through them with cunning. Tertullius, in the book of Acts, was a great orator, but he didn't have the voice of the Lord operating through him. In fact, he brought 